Jeff Beck kept making music right up until his January 2023 death at age 78, but on a few occasions, accidents nearly brought an end to his career. One happened just a few years after he broke through. Beck was often regarded as one of the greatest rock guitarists of all time. He first rose to fame in 1965, when he replaced Eric Clapton in the Yardbirds. Beck stayed with the band for less than two years, but it was a significant period for the group, creating enduring songs including Heart Full of Soul, I'm a Man, and Shapes of Things. After that, he released a few solo singles and assembled the Jeff Beck Group, which included Rod Stewart and future Rolling Stone, Ronnie Wood. In 1969, the band was booked to play Woodstock, but they canceled the appearance. Beck later said the band was in a state of turmoil, telling Rolling Stone in 2010, I could see the end of the tunnel. Still, the group managed to put out an album, Beck Ola, which made the US Top 15 and the UK Top 40. Yet the album and Missing Woodstock were not the most momentous occasions of the year for Beck. In December 1969, just after he declined to join the Rolling Stones, Beck had a car accident that nearly ended his career. Among other injuries, he suffered a skull fracture that was so serious he had to put a pause on music for more than a year to properly recover. And I saw this trail of blood and I went, oh dear. And I realized it was just pouring out of me. Oh. You know? Beck, who had a tendency to downplay big things in his life, looked on the bright side of the car accident, noting that it gave way to the second coming of his band. In his book, Hot Rods and Rock and Roll, he wrote, After the crash, it took me a while to get back into music, but it did prompt the second Jeff Beck group. That said, the accident had long-lasting health repercussions that affected Beck's relationship with music. He wrote, At this point, I'd had a bash to the head and a fractured skull. I don't know what happened to my brain, but I couldn't stand loud noises at all, let alone the thought of cymbals crashing around. Beck had a particular passion for American hot rods. He was known for his collection of dozens of vintage cars, most of which he built or modified with his own hands. Several of the hot rods were Fords from the 1930s, but he also had modified Chevy Corvettes from different eras. I just get fascinated by the effort that the people put in, you know, to these cars. For decades, Beck would scour swap meets and call dealers for original parts to rebuild whatever project he was working on. According to GQ, when Eric Clapton showed off his collection of Ferraris, Beck was unenthused. Beck told his fellow guitarist as he walked Clapton over to his nearest hot rod, anyone can buy those, these you make. Beck was around cars a lot, so the 1969 crash was hardly his only car-related accident. According to the Financial Times, Beck once smashed his thumb under a car while working away on it. On another occasion, he burned holes in his hands while he was sandblasting a chassis. Given how much his work relied on his hands, you'd think Beck might want to avoid the risk that comes from working on cars. But he said he couldn't be bothered with that, telling GQ, If I worried about my fingers, I'd never pick up a pair of pliers. Indeed, his worst hand injury occurred outside the garage. In 2010, Beck nearly lost his index finger while preparing dinner. As he chopped carrots, the guitar legend looked down and noticed he lost part of his finger. He told Express, I mean, I lost the tip. It was gone. It was just hanging off. I stuck it back and freaked out and then went to the hospital. But I avoided stitches because the surgeon said I'd done such a great job sticking it back. Beck assumed that was the end of his music career. But after a short hiatus, he got back into the studio to finish an album in which he played with just three fingers. Time reports that the experience was enough for Beck to take out a $10 million insurance policy on his fingers. 